MXT, and MXT Pro from White's Electronics. White's MXT Pro now adds what our successful MXT users have asked for, a backlit display, tone ID, and ground grab. Let's join Steve Howard as he describes the use and features of both the MXT and the MXT Pro. Once assembled, the MXT and MXT Pro have adjustable arm cut positions. Depending on the, the length of your arm, you're going to want to adjust that for comfort. Uh, the lower shaft also adjusts. Uh, you've got a choke collar you would release, and then the buttons that you would find another adjustment hole, and then tighten down the choke collar. So you want to adjust that so that you can sweep the search coil over the ground without stooping or, and becoming uncomfortable. You want to be able to stand upright, sweep the coil right on the ground. Both MXT and MXT Pro operate on the standard equipment, eight AA batteries. You'd pull up on the tab and uh, pull the door open. You'd have eight of your double A's. The plus and the minuses are marked in the back of the battery compartment and you want to make sure you get those oriented correctly. Once you have all of your cells in place, you close the door. The steel pins go to the inside and the decal goes down. Slides into the battery compartment. Close the door. The latch is latched to the front first and then go to the back on both sides. You may also note that there are instructions on the bottom of the control box, sort of a cheat sheet of sorts to tell you what the modes do and, and what all your features are. You got some more instructions on the top of the control box. The MXT and MXT Pro are fairly easy to set up the controls. Triangles indicate the preset. You can see the triangle preset here. The uh, gain turns on. And if we set most of uh, our controls have little triangles, if we set everything to a triangle, uh, we'll probably be fine. Uh, the only thing you really need to select is the mode. The MXT and MXT Pro are significantly different between coin and jewelry, relic and prospecting, almost like having three metal detectors in one. We're going to start with the coin and jewelry program. And uh, the only other real selection is the threshold. You want to set that so that you hear just a very slight hum. The softest you can and still hear it, it's the edge of responding and that's why it's called threshold. It's the edge, the beginning of sound. So at this point we're ready to start hunting for coins and jewelry. Everything's on a triangle. I've selected the threshold for the slight hum and I've decided to use my coin and jewelry mode. We want to sweep our search coil close to the ground, scrubbing it in the grass, in rocky or sandy terrain just a half inch off of, of rough surfaces, overlapping the passes as we go, about two seconds side to side. These are modern motion instruments, so sweeping the coil is critical to making them work. Uh, all that beeps is, is not of interest. If it sputters and spits, it's probably not of interest. You're looking for a, a solid, repeatable beep over multiple passes. Here's a good target. Solid, repeatable beep over multiple passes indicates you're ready to look at your display. This is telling me it's probably a nickel or a ring. So I'm interested in digging it. I'm going to squeeze and hold my trigger on the, dis on the grip. And I'm going to X the target side to side and forward and back. The strongest volume and the highest pitch is the center of the target. It's saying it's about one inch deep and that'll be right in the hole in the center of the search coil. Care must be taken to dig appropriately for the ground conditions. Uh, leaving holes uncovered are, is dangerous to livestock and people, so you want to refill your holes. But in an area like this, we want to keep the grass looking nice as well. It's best to use a, a trowel and to use a what's called a horseshoe method, which is to cut the turf in this particular type of ground in a half circle or a horseshoe shape. You're going to pry the turf up and voila, we've got our target already. Now a lot of times it said it was one inch, it'll be in the, the bottom of the flap. T 
to uh, search for that, you would want to scrape that bottom of the flat back into the hole. If you need to remove dirt from the hole, it's best to use a drop cloth to keep from spreading uh, mud and dirt uh, into the grass. As you dig your dirt out, you're going to place it on the drop cloth and keep it from getting brushed into the soil. Uh, it really does speed things up to have a pinpointing device. A device like this, once you've flipped your flap over, you can very quickly see, is it in the flap or is it in the hole? And I know this one's in the hole here. If it is in the hole, is it on one side or the other? So a little pinpointer like White's Bullseye really speeds things up. As we remove our dirt from the hole and we place it on our drop cloth, something a pinpointer like the Bullseye can also help to know, have you dug it out of the hole yet? Not in the hole anymore. Oh, here it is. You can sort through your dirt clods. Aha, we've got our target. So now, when I put my target into my pouch, I'm going to carefully put the dirt back in the hole, flip my flap back over, it's still attached, and that's going to hold through a lawnmower. Give it a, a step, and it's very difficult to tell where I've dug there, uh, here in the grass. Of course, different types of terrain will require different digging methods, but in grass this is one of the preferred methods. And it's always good to check your holes. Sometimes there's more than one target there. So I'm checking to see if maybe uh, there was a target I missed. Maybe there was more than one target there. At this point, I'm ready to continue detecting.